Alrighty, you guys. So, I decided to do this little video kind of comparing the Huanager X58 Deluxe and actually, like, good level boards. Or I guess I shouldn't say good level, but the, um, like, the originally manufactured boards. Because we have the, the Huanager X58 right here. Triple channel memory support for any of the e or any of the um x58 cpus with active cooling on the north bridge triple channel memory now unfortunately with the w36 and w35 series cpus you can't use ecc memory with the um well on this board i don't know why it doesn't have compatibility with the ecc it should but it just doesn't so if you're going to be using ECC memory, you have to go X55 or X56. I don't know if the E-series CPUs work at all, or if the W55 series CPUs work with the ECC memory. I haven't tested that yet, but I probably will in the future, just knowing me, because I evidently love buying random processors. Um, This is not a bad board. For the price, it's not bad. But there are other options on AliExpress. But first, let me show you something that I just learned about. This board itself, $62. Well, to buy this board, memory, and CPU, it costs more than what this is. You see that? X5690, 12 gigs of RAM, and the board, 140 bucks. I was going to do a price comparison of using a uh, standard X58 versus the Chinese X58 boards and kind of show a comparison of how you can buy the actual boards and a better CPU for cheaper money. That gets completely blown out of the water with this. X5690, you don't even need to overclock it. That thing out of the box is going to be very decent for gaming. 12 gigs of RAM, what you want to go for, and the board for 140 bucks. That blows what I was going to show you out of the water. If you want to get into this, if you want to buy this, go for this package. This is a very good package. Um, I don't know if there are any other packages or any other sets. Actually, here, let's take a look and see. Let's do X58. Oh, set. And it looks like what we've got mostly popping up is X79 stuff. Because of reasons. Yeah. Alright, well, other boards on AliExpress that are actually, like, feature-rich boards that are, like, actual production boards from America. Got, like, the MSI X58 Pro, which has pretty good CPU compatibility and also pretty decent VRMs for actual overclocking instead of just doing this um, multiplier overclocking. You can, you can actually take like an X5675, which is the most popular CPU for overclocking on this platform. You could probably take it up to 4.3, 4.4 gigahertz on this board without any problems. Um, now, there is more involved in overclocking on one of these boards than on the Juan and X58. The Juan and X58 is one of the simplest boards I've ever overclocked with because all you do is adjust the multipliers, and if something crashes, well, you drop the multipliers down. That was the easiest I've ever had overclocking. And then that's why when someone was asking for a tutorial, I kind of almost felt like I, I didn't need to do a tutorial or it wasn't a very good tutorial because it's just as simple as download one program and then adjust multipliers. Like, here's another board. This one falls under a little bit of a cheaper category, so it's about 110 bucks. Gigabyte Ultra Durable. This is another decent overclocking board. Not for extreme overclocking, obviously, but yet again, you're not going to try and push it to 5.5 gigahertz under liquid nitrogen. This is just going to be for like your daily use overclock and just game with it. Gaming, production, everything should in theory be better on this board than what it should be on the X or the Juan Engine board. Unless you're going for like the X5690 and 48 gigs of RAM if you have like a very memory intensive use. Uh, here's just another board. We've got the ASUS board. 
the P6T. Um, this board looks like honestly kind of looks like a mess because of the, all the random colors, but at the end of the day, this is still cheaper than going out and buying like um like the new Ryzen or going for like first gen Ryzen. These boards will outperform first gen Ryzen except for the Ryzen 7 because that thing has two more cores and four more threads. Obviously, that's not going to over it's not going to outdo it on um multi-core situations, but it's still very good. And then even like the Sabretooth board. This board was actually what originally got me into X58. And I've never owned a Sabretooth board. I almost am halfway tempted just to order one, just to have it. They got, like, the Asus Rampage 2, which is a micro ATX board. I keep going back to this. There are other options on AliExpress besides the one your boards. And I understand that for some people, it's not going to be a realistic grab, simply because it's going to cost more. And the frame rate in gaming is probably going to be better, but it is going to ultimately cost more to get into this than what it would cost to get into the Juaninger board, especially with this package. But I still do plan on doing the uh, the benchmarks and comparisons, showing you the differences between having actual overclocks and just having a multiplier increase. Now, there are some people, as in Mr. Tech Deals, that says, oh, overclocking with the front side bus is just such a pain in the butt, you don't want to do it. Yes, it is more involved, but the amount of performance you can get is significantly better. Significantly better. Like this board, you cannot touch the memory clocks or timing. Um, I'm using 12 gigs of Samsung memory running at 1600 that it clocks it down to 1333. On Pink Nova, which is my GPU test rig that I've actually been actually doing quite a bit of GPU testing, I just haven't recorded it yet. Um, you put my 980 Ti in that system and the synthetic benchmarks go way up you put my 980 ti in there and you start gaming on it the gaming becomes a much smoother experience because a much higher frame rate experience this system right here on dota 2 will get about 110 to 120 fps constant well in a game in that system with a gpu that is 12 years old at the same resolution, or at a lower resolution, but at the same uh, render quality, I was getting 220 FPS. Constant. So, there is a lot of benefit to having an actually overclocking board, which I am going to show you here. Alrighty, you guys. So, as you can see here, we got a... Physic, or we got a physics score of 13,557, and we got an overall score of 13,729. This is with the CPU running at, let's see if we can, oh, I don't have my MSI Afterburner up. But this would be with the CPU running at 3.99 gigahertz and the... GPU running at completely stock base speeds. So let's uh, put my 980 Ti into my other rig, comparing the scores and seeing how much it differs from an actually overclocked X58 system compared to a kind of overclocked X58 system. Actually, can we see CPU? Like we got CPU temperature. Uh, do 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 do. Just take that. Make sure that that was all good, all well and good. CPU frequency. Wait, we were. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot that I uh, bumped up the clock a little bit more. After I fixed my overheating problem, <laughs> which I'm sad to say, I had changed up the orientation of my fans to make it a blowing it from like bottom and then from the back of the case and then exhausting out the side. Um, I may have forgot to flip around the exhaust fan, so CPU cooler and exhaust fan were blowing into each other. Yeah, that that was my mistake. See, so guys, even someone who has built, I think, probably like 30 computers can still make mistakes. <laughs> really dumb mistakes. But still, mistakes nonetheless. But yeah, as you can see here, running at about 3... 
are about 4.12 gigahertz. Now I think that that's on two cores and then the all core boost is at um, 4.0 or 3.99. But yeah, it, it, not a bad score, especially considering what the motherboard costs and what the CPU costs. Alrighty, so I would like to take a second to thank you guys for watching and sitting through some benchmarks. Um, so going in and reviewing the benchmarks, we had ex almost just about, almost exactly, sorry English, I don't do it much, about a thousand points above on Pink Nova than with the Juan Inger X58 Deluxe. A thousand points on the CPU and 500 points, I believe, on the GPU side. Both of which, um, or both the GPU was running at the same speed both times. Both of them had the fan speed set to 85%, and then there was no other tuning done. I have a 980 Ti Extreme. I can easily push this thing a lot farther than that, and I can get my scores a lot higher which really does show a bigger difference in the synthetics. Um, I had said that I thought that there was going to be a bigger difference between the gaming performances of both boards, but after spending some time trying to benchmark both game or both systems with some games, I noticed that they were within a few percent of each other. Like we're talking two to five percent when it comes to frame rate and the frame times were nearly identical. Um, the 1% lows were a little bit better on Pink Nova, but only by a little bit. So what that really makes me realize is that this board with this particular CPU is not bad. Um, comparing it to Pink Nova that's got a X5660 overclocked to 4.0, Two five or four point three gigahertz, um, and then memory speed running at eighteen eighty eight. The synthetic scores showed a worse result on the Wanager X fifty eight board, but the gaming performance was not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. The gaming performance, in fact, was so very similar that there was almost no reason that I could rationalize suggesting going and picking out a newer board. By the way, seriously, dude, how many times are you going to sign in and out of Dota? I think he's been, like, popping up all day. Like, every 30 seconds, he signs in, he signs out, he signs in, he signs out. Just set myself to offline. Um. But yeah, there is... I think a lot more value in this platform after this experiment. I see there being a lot more value in this platform after this experiment today simply because of the actual overclocking performance. Now, I'm sure if I were to really tune this board, really try and start tuning with it, start messing with the multipliers as I have done, as I've started trying to, um... I'm betting I could get just a wee bit more out of this board, but I don't know. Um, setting all the multipliers to 31 causes crashes. Setting all the multipliers to 30, we run totally fine. That's why I was originally talking about this board uh, just running at 3.99 gigahertz instead of the full 4 gigahertz, because this will bring us up to, like, I think 4.1. So really not much more. And um, doing something like this could get our single core or our first two cores up to about 4.2. Um, now, if we were to do this and then this, I think this would get our single core up to about 4.3. I could be wrong about that. But l like I said, this board shows a very significant amount of promise. And something that I'm very much going to be looking more into, um, and when I get a full optimization video done of how to fully optimize and fully um, 
tune on this platform i will definitely be making a video about that um the kind of quick and dirty quick and dirty overclocks if you want to be doing this would probably be just to uh, grab your w3680 try setting it at 30 uh for the multipliers and then if it crashes drop it down to 29 on all the multipliers um i think i may have gotten a very 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 good w3680 like a golden sample w3680 because I've been able to run it so much faster than what I was my W3570. But the W3570 is also built on a larger process node, so it has more heat output with more power consumption, uh, less efficiency, and I'm guessing worse microcode because of it literally only being able to run at 3.6 gigahertz on this platform. Granted, though, I could have gotten an absolute dud of a CPU as well, so I don't know. Take that one as you will. But this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you very much for watching, and definitely stay tuned for more update videos on this board. Peace out. See you.